Lord, you're beautiful. I can't explain this love within my heart. I only know that we will never part. You're beautiful, and in my heart you'll always. I think that you know most of the business people that I've I've worked with or met with over the last few years feel um, that they've just become a cash cow for some pastor's initiative or a cash cow for some missionary initiative. Mm -hmm. And you know, their only contribution is money. There's probably a, a lot of frustration with business people from the priestly side, from the church side. Why don't the business people get it? You know, we need more finances, we need their expertise because these are make things happen people. How can we engage more uh, with this world without looking like we're coming begging. I think that's quite a common situation yeah. amongst business people. Yeah. And I've, I've been on the wrong end of that. You know, as a director of a mission agency, mm -hmm. I've gone to business people saying, you know, we're doing the missions, give us your money. One of our secret weapons in this gathering for three days is a man called Mark Markovich. Um, Mark has been struggling with this whole area of business, marketplace, the connection with the gospel, what's described as business as missions in some ways for probably over 20 years. I, I remember I had this profound experience driving to a businessman's office and God just told me, you know, don't say that. So I got to this businessman's office and did the opposite. I, you know, I believe that everyone is called and has a great commission calling on their life. You know, what's God saying to you? And how, as a missions leader, can I serve you and help you see that fulfilled? And by the way, let's go out for lunch and I'm paying. And the guy I thought was going to just cry because it was so different from every other approach, which was not only can you give me a load of money, but you can pay for lunch as well. Mm -hmm. Now he ended up giving us a load of money and doing stuff in <laughs> partnership with us. But it was, it was that kind of paradigm shift of how do we enable business people to really get involved in, in the kingdom? I think picking up on what Mark was saying there, first of all, there was a huge mindset change for me because there was this whole background of full-time Christian ministry and that some people are called to that and the rest are not. And so Margie, for many years, had, had a diverse career ranging from one of the heads of the girl, uh, girls' brigade uh, to um, working with a charity called Passion. Um, so very much a Christian ministry type of arena. And when we first started to engage in the business side, she was quite scared, I would say, about well, this, this whole tough area of business. And yet her natural gifting, amongst many, is one of administration. So she's got an intercessory mantle, she's a leader, um, she's a manager, she's an implementer. Coming out of the old form of what was recognised as full-time ministry and then more into business was really hard at first. When you're working with visionaries, you're not necessarily implementing your own vision. You're implementing somebody else's vision and that's good and there's a whole thing to do with that. But for me, part of what God did in those first few months was make me realise that I was now in a season, season to follow what was the passion in my own heart. I, I really came to a point of uh, quite tangibly one day sort of thinking, OK, have I really got gift and anointing? Or is it that I did what I was doing before for so long, I knew it backwards and inside out? Have I really got something in me? Am I really carrying something that actually is transferable into this business arena? And, uh, or am I just sham yeah. <laughs> really you know do i look good on the outside but actually there's nothing to follow through yeah i think what it was for me the click was suddenly in that season of of coming to that point i simply started again being who i was so i started to do what i do and to be who i am in a way trying to connect those in the priestly role that have the knowledge of scripture that understand the dynamics to impart and equip to those in the marketplace who don't necessarily have as much time, perhaps haven't been to Bible college, but give them some solid principles, bring them some care, some pastoral care and ear to listen to, 
um, be their friend on the journey? I started with the traditional view in the church that people in business were somehow less anointed than especially pastors or missionaries. Joe Ferranti, a 30-odd year missionary, uh, ordained in a number of ministries in America, traveled the world. His life message is on the Father heart of God. And then after about 20 years of pastoral work, uh, God spoke to my heart that it was time to um, go minister to spiritual leaders. And so I actually resigned my church. They sent me out to go minister to spiritual leaders. And I'm trying to find where these leaders are at. And I'm waiting for someone to invite me to a pastor's conference, to a missionary conference, evangelist conference, something. No invitations. All I keep getting are all these invitations to go speak to business people. After a few years of this, I realized this was the vision. This, so this was eye-opening to me uh, in my ignorance that God had called men and women to business with an anointing equal to that of any anointing a pastor, a missionary, an evangelist had. And so it's a great joy for me now to come alongside business uh, people in a pastoral role to comfort, encourage, teach. Victor Lorenzo, Victor and I have worked together for over five years. He's like a cuddly teddy bear. He can tell you something really tough with a smile on his face and you just know, gosh, that's, that's a nugget I need to hold on to. I think for me, my own challenge into that was that probably I would say 90% of my time was invested from a pulpit and from a platform and from a structure without having any kind of connection directly mm -hmm. with the daily life of people. His father was the head of the Baptist church in Argentina. He had uh, been used to a kind of signs and wonders ministry with thousands of people in Argentina all through the revival in the late 80s and early 90s. Felt very much called by God to come to England. And coming back to England was, it's like God telling me, you cannot use more than 15% of your time in, in a platform. I want you to come to personal contact to equip people, to give them something, and then trusting that in that giving and that equipping, I will be leading them to use that. And in that contact and that interaction, I think that is the future of us, of working together. You know, I, Joe have an equipment that I don't have, but when I look Paul in his business, he need this equipment and he need this equipment, but I will not do the job that he have to do, and Joe will not do it, but we are equipping him. Yeah. And in that, then inspiration of the Spirit, he will use it and apply him into his business to bring that fruit. And I think that that part of the equipment is mm -hmm. the challenge that is for us, those who have been in, in ministry. Mm -hmm. We have been confining the reality of God mm -hmm. just to a meeting or to a building when God wants that mm -hmm. to be manifest by every one of us, individually and also together. Mm -hmm. and, and that is the challenge. If the mindset can be cultivated that Monday is the beginning of church, in a way, that Monday is the beginning of the real outworking of our faith, then Sunday can become more of a pleasure. I think we meet business to business, home to home. Mm -hmm. We meet in the boardroom. We meet in the conference room. We meet in the coffee shop. Mm -hmm. We meet as employees together. We meet as fellow believers together in the marketplace. That's where we're at all day long for five days a week or six many times. Uh, we're not in homes where we can meet day to day yeah. uh, because we're gone from home 12, 14 hours a day. So I think it's even more important today yeah. that that be translated into our culture into the actual physical dwellings and shops of the marketplace. Mm, right. Well, for me, it will never happen coming from a Sunday and preaching in a pulpit. I remember that it was under this pressure of feeling that I will transform people. And then God told me, you will never transform anyone. I transform people. You encourage, you stimulate, you can give a teaching and that. 
But it's that connection with the Spirit that is in you, that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. and that where you are and where we are together, anything can happen. I want a church that when I will be walking in, in, in England, people will say, these people are bringing a transformation into the square mile. Things are not the same because these people are bringing something completely different. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it, Part and of this challenge is to see that your business, your work with the NHS, whatever it may be, is part of taking dominion, of bringing his kingdom here on earth, bringing in a new way of being um, that is quite seriously countercultural.